Former Transport Minister S. Zwarin was handed 27 charges on Thursday following the completion of an investigation by the Corrupt Practices Investigation Bureau. Among the charges are two counts of corruption and 24 counts of obtaining valuables from someone he had business dealings with as a public servant. Iswaran had also allegedly obstructed the course of justice. The courtroom started to fill up as doors opened at about 8.30 a.m. Now about a third of the courtroom was made up of members of the media. Court proceedings then started just after 9 a.m. A court officer told the court that the charges had been read to Iswaran before the hearing. He looked calm as the court proceedings carried on. Now, when asked by the judge how he intended to plead to the 27 charges, Iswaran said he's not guilty. The case is adjourned for a pre-trial conference. The court proceedings ended at about 9.20 a.m. and Iswaran left the state courts slightly after. This is what he said when asked by SD outside the court building on how things have been for him in the past few months. You may want to make any comments so far to the media because all of us are wondering how things have been. I'll put out a statement later. Iswaran is now out on $800,000 bail. Most of the alleged offences involve billionaire Ong Bing Singh, who brought Formula One to Singapore in 2008. The Attorney General's Chambers said it will make a decision about the CPIB investigation into Mr Ong after the case against Iswaran is completed. Iswaran's earliest offence was allegedly in 2015. According to charge sheets, he is accused of having corruptly obtained gratification valued at about $145,000 from Mr Ong in September 2022. This was in exchange for advancing Mr Ong's business interests relating to a contract between Singapore Grand Prix and the Singapore Tourism Board. He also allegedly obtained from Mr Ong gratification valued at about $20,800 in December 2022. This for advancing Mr Ong's business interests in matters relating to a contract between Singapore GP and the STB and a proposal for contract with the STB. If convicted of corruptly obtaining gratification under the Prevention of Corruption Act, Iswaran can be jailed for up to seven years, fined up to $100,000 or both. For obtaining valuables from someone he had business dealings with as a public servant, he can be fined, jailed for up to two years or both. And for obstructing the cause of justice, he can be jailed for up to seven years, fined or both. Meanwhile, Iswaran has resigned as a cabinet minister and as a member of the People's Action Party. He also resigned as an MP for the West Coast GRC. In a letter to Prime Minister Lee Sen Lung, Iswaran said he would return his ministerial salary and MP allowances from the start of the CPIB's investigations in July last year. Responding to the letter, PM Lee said he accepted Iswaran's resignation and acknowledged the return of the monies. PM Lee told Iswaran that he was disappointed and saddened that you are leaving politics in these circumstances. He added that it is, however, essential that he deals with such matters rigorously in accordance with the law. In a separate statement, the Prime Minister's office said effective Thursday, Acting Transport Minister Chi Hong Tat will replace Iswaran as Transport Minister. He will also be appointed Second Minister for Finance. Minister for Sustainability and the Environment Grace Fu will be the new Minister in Charge of Trade Relations. Meanwhile, speaking to the media on Thursday noon, Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong said the PAP's stance on corruption is non-negotiable. He also added that Iswaran's case will have no impact on the party's leadership transition. As far as the impact on succession is concerned, there will be no impact. We have announced that the leadership transition will take place before the next general election and before the party conference this year. This plan remains on track. Will this incident have an impact on the party and party morale? I have no doubt that it will. But we cannot allow this political hit to compromise our zero-tolerance stance against corruption. And that's why the party, the government, will continue to do the right thing and do everything we can to keep our system corruption-free. And I believe Singaporeans expect no less from us. In a separate statement, Iswaran reiterates his innocence and rejects the charges and allegations against him.
He says, I am innocent and will now focus on clearing my name.